In this video, I mention a meal. Eats batteries for breakfast. I feel something. It's very nice under touch. And talk about amps. 0 0.356 amps. It's Dad Vinci time. So it's currently winter in the UK, and one of the questions I get asked most this time of year is what type of heating you can use with your solar generator. In no uncertain terms, electric space heating eats batteries for breakfast, and even smaller fan heaters or oil-filled radiators running at about 500 watts still drain large solar generators or batteries fast. So like many of you out there, I've been working from home now for quite a while, and I've noticed that my heating's been on a lot more, so I wanted to try and knock it down a notch or two. So I've been looking into options and I think I might have found one. So it wasn't just about saving money on gas, but also having something that would work with solar generators and take advantage of limited winter sun. So that's what led me to the bewarmer.co.uk site and their range of heating products. So another really good thing about their products is even if you're not looking to run them off battery power and use the mains instead, they're still really economical. So for example, if you round up my one which runs at about 80 to 90 watts, up to 100 watts, and you can run that for 10 hours, so that's one kilowatt hour. So if your tariff's about 16 pence, that's 16 pence to run it for 10 hours, which is amazing. So this is what turned up in the box for me. So obviously I've got my foot buddy here, and I've got the 50 centimetre or half a metre wide by 100 centimetres or one metre in length version. And this is rated at about 80 watts. Uh, you get this handy little leaflet here as well, which gives you operating instructions, specifications, warranty details, and also who to contact for help. So I'm just gonna put that up on screen now to give you a bit of a closer look. And then what we'll do is I'll just have a look round and show you how this thing's put together. Okay, so this is the uh, bottom here of the foot buddy and it's all very nicely stitched together. There's no real missing stitches anywhere, which is good, which means that it should last the test of time and usage. Um, it feels pretty much like short pile carpet, so very easy under the foot. And I've been using this now for about a month and a half and I'm very impressed with it. So let's just flip over and just show you the front. So this one is the front because it's got the little um, badge here on it, the warm buddy badge sewn in on there as well. And again, it's very nice under touch, short pole carpet feel. I will say it does have a new carpet smell. It probably lasts about two or three days when you get it. But again, it goes fairly quickly after some normal use. So what we'll do now is just have a look around uh, the cabling on here. So as you can see, the cable here just goes straight into the end of the foot buddy. There is no junction box at all on here. Uh, it's just sewn around there to keep it in place. So the cable itself here, and I've measured from the uh, end of the foot buddy here right to the uh, RCD is just over two meters in length. So you might need to consider that wherever you're going to plug this particular one in. Um, on here, as you can see as well, and we're just gonna go through this when we plug it in, this is the RCD. So we've got a test button here and then a reset button there just to make sure that this is working correctly should anything go wrong uh, with this. Uh, we have a little label on here as well, which gives some more details here, which is pretty good. So we've got uh, voltage on here again. This is the stuff that you can see in the uh, little leaf that comes with it. So this is 230 volts at uh, 80 watts. That gives the dimensions of it. And also on here as well, I'm hoping that's visible on screen. It shows you the max rated current, which is uh, 0.35 of an amp at 20 degrees Celsius. So let's get this plugged in now and then just see how it operates. Okay, we're switched on now, and as you can see on here, we've got uh, figures coming in from the energy monitoring plug. I've also got my smart plug here, which has got uh, energy monitoring on, which I'm just gonna show you on screen now, because I'm recording that off of my mobile phone as I speak. So we're just gonna go through what they're showing, because they'll show a difference, because they're obviously the accuracy is different on both. But before we do that, I'm just gonna show you the uh, RCD operation, and that should trip out if you have any problems, but you can test it by pushing the test button, which is the green button, and you hear that click, which effectively switches it off. And then if you push the reset and that stays on, that means you're good. So that's a good test of the RCD there. So that stops it if there are any problems with your foot buddy. So in terms of watch use, so at the moment we've got 94 showing on the uh, monitoring plug. 
and we've got about 89 showing in the Smart uh, Life app on my phone. So what we'll do is we'll just cycle through these to show you what we've got. So there's a kilowatt hours used. And that's the current voltage, the mains voltage coming through at this plug, again, recorded by this. And again, they're both slightly inaccurate. So that's why I'm trying two at once. So if we go over to amps, so that's shown on there 0.389 amps. So that's in the region where it said it would be of about 0.35 amps on the little label on there. And that's uh, showing on the mobile phone as well as 377 milliamps at the moment so that's three point or sorry point three seven seven amps so they're about right and they're showing different voltages as well and that's how your watts are calculated so it's amps times voltage uh, equals watts so again that's about point three seven seven times by 237 volts give us about 89 watts on the phone and the same is the same calculations used on here to give us a watt total at the moment of 93.6. So that's the actual energy usage on a mains socket. So we're gonna try something else now. So before we start this section, I just wanted to mention a few things. The estimates given here are very rough and ballpark figures. So in the real world, you may get more or less out of your solar generator. And this is based on my 80% usable rule of thumb. So accounting for losses and not discharging the battery completely on every cycle. And the mains voltages shown are based on the onboard inverter spec. So some of them may drop as the battery charge drops if they're not regulated. So now it's time to move into an area that's really working well for me and that's actually battery power in my foot buddy. And I know a lot of people have different setups where they are and where they want to use this. So I thought what I'd do is I'd cycle through all of the solar generators I currently have just to show you whether the foot buddy actually works or not. And again, it will work for a certain amount of time depending on how much energy storage you can get in your solar generator. So this is my big beast here. This is my EB150 and this is 1500 watt hours of energy storage when it's fully charged, of course. And again, you can use this one when you're using solar power as well. So again, on most of the days when I'm getting sun in the winter, effectively I can run this from completely free while still keeping the battery at the same level, which is just brilliant. So let's start off with this one and have a quick look through. So as you can see on screen at the moment on this, and again, I want to use this because this keeps it consistent across all of them, you know, because of the accuracy element of this. So at the moment, it's currently showing it's using uh, 85 watts. So let's move over to the voltage. So it's supplying 230 volts at the socket here at uh, 50 hertz. And it's staying around the, uh, the known amp, to le amp level, which is three, sorry, 0.369 amps. Again, that's around the 0.35 at 20 degrees Celsius for this. So that's actually working fine. And again, depending on your charge level, this uh, particular solar generator, you could run for a significant amount of time. So now it's time to move on the next biggest. So the All Powers 666 watt hour is drawing about 77 watts at the moment which is on a voltage at 218 volts at the socket. And again, staying in the amp range there of 0 0.356 amps. So this is the Buden's 384 watt hour. So as you can see at the moment, it's drawing 78 watts. And voltage wise, it's at 218 volts at the socket. And again, staying bang on, on the 0 0.357 amps. So next up is the All Powers 372 watt hour. So we're currently showing just under 85 watts. And that's with a voltage of 228 volts at the socket. And that's pulling 0 0.371 amps. So this is the All Powers 288 watt hour. And that's uh, 80 watts with 221 volts at the socket and that's drawing 0 0.362 amps. And last but not least is the Buden's 240 watt hour. So what we've got on screen at the moment is 82 watts. At the socket, we've got 222 volts and it's pulling 0 0.370 amps. If you put this on a really cold floor, it will take quite a long time to warm up. On my laminate floor, it takes about 20 to 30 minutes to get nice and toasty. I really like the idea of having an inbuilt RCD, just to give you that extra peace of mind when it comes to safety. 
For me, I haven't really noticed how warm and comfy I've got until I've got up and walked off onto a hard floor. Then you really do notice the temperature difference. I do like the range of sizes available, both on the rug buddy and the foot buddy. I get questions from viewers who have holiday homes, park homes, caravans, campers and RVs. And the scope of sizes available pretty much covers every situation. We hope you liked our video. All the links you'll need will be in the description below. Please like, share, subscribe and hit the bell icon. And stay tuned to Dad Vinci.